Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations we happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. The links to all of these builders are in the description below. If you want to see more of their custom creations, I highly recommend you check them out. Let them know what you think about these models that they're making. And before we jump into the first build of the week, this last week for our web store, the custom creation is the Taxi from Fifth Element, designed by David Dupont. Parent. It's excellent. It's absolutely massive, really well detailed, even from the bottom, and it's got its own custom stickers. You can get the PDF instructions at our web store. That's www.brickfault.toys. Highly recommend you check it out now for the first build of the week. This is called Midas by Shamisen Fred. In the description, they say it is inspired by Destiny Fallen, and personally, I just think it's a fun, extremely unique uh, take on a futuristic speeder bike. Big fan of speeder bikes in general. I like that they used the pieces from the Tron set for the wheels and then went completely with the gold aesthetic. Personally, I think the gold that's used for the dish pieces just catches really well with the light and the dark wheels with those slight trans blue accents are just a nice way to bring out a fun and interesting color combination. Looks like the minifigure is one of the gold ninjas from Ninjago, a fur coat piece from a superhero villain, and I'm not entirely whose hair piece that is. Somebody let me know in the comments below. Let's check out number nine. Moving down the list, that is from the designer Jalex, and the title is A Family Has Bought a New TV During the 70s. Oddly specific, but once you read that, you're like, yeah, that totally makes sense. You've got the popcorn pieces for the box, literally the popcorn Lego pieces, and what we also call popcorn as the uh, the packing stuff that you get. It's a big wooden box with a relatively small frame, so yeah, it's definitely a much older TV, and just a wonderful framing all around of this living room. Colorful carpet, kind of an ugly color combination for a couch. I like the simple technique used to make the folds in the drapes and the forced perspective building in the backdrop is wonderful. Something tells me the details in this room are so oddly specific that it must be pulled directly from memory of the builder. And then let's move on. I haven't actually done any Game of Thrones builds, but Chubby Bots did a pretty darn good Iron Throne. As of the release of this video, the second to last episode is airing tonight and there have been some pretty darn good Lego custom creations in the past and I have a feeling next week there's probably going to be one or two that certain builds are working up towards for the finale. And here this is probably the best Iron Throne that I've seen built in LEGO. If somebody has found a better one, please link it to me in the comments below. But for now, I'm going to say Chubby Bots is the reigning champion. This is great. The katanas arc upwards just a little bit on either side. And there's a combination of a bunch of different types of swords from different eras. Also, the window build in the back for the seven different points of the kingdom looks pretty good. And let's move on to number seven. Bruce Lowell has built the Lego Los Angeles City Hall. In terms of city halls in general, I don't know how impressive of a design is maybe compared to other ones in other cities, but no one can argue that Bruce hasn't captured the aesthetic quite well with this rendition here. Interesting choice to use those star pieces. I think that's from a Captain America set uh, for the actual 50 stars of the, uh, of the flag. And at first glance, this looks like a micro build or at least as micro as you could make it with the pieces that were used, but it is certainly not a small build by any measure. This is a 1 in 200 scale, and Bruce has been working on this since 2014. He's got a full write-up on the history of the production of this model, so it's awesome that you're looking at something that was basically five years in the making, probably on and off, and I think he absolutely knocked this out of the park. Number six is from Lucas Lubisuski, and this is called Lego Street. We've actually followed this guy for quite a long time, and right here is just just a render of the most complete version of some of the latest modular building creations from this guy. So number one, this is kind of a revisit of some of these old amazing custom modular creations. And I'm not exactly sure what era these buildings came from. It looks like they could have been built hundreds of years ago, but the general style in which he sets up his city creations, it looks like people are walking around from like the 1920s. This here is, I think his most recent one. It doesn't belong uh, from that exact era, but it looks to be a hotel in Cuba and I absolutely love the vibrant colors here. Definitely a wonderful way to break up some of the more drab or serious or monotonous tones that you might see in a realistic build. And to be fair, uh, Cuba is actually quite colorful so you might have actually been able to see something like this or still can see something like this painted in nice bright vibrant colors in Havana. Okay moving down this is number five. We're not really going in any order of best to worst by the way. This is just uh, kind of a fun order in which you show off these builds. Remember links 
links in the description below. We have May the 4th be with you. This is a little bit late. Actually, well, I didn't see this. It must have been posted the same day as I was recording uh, last week's episode from Miro Dudas. We've got his latest large Star Wars minifigure build, which is Darth Vader. He's got a whole slew of these creations, and technically this is an updated form of Darth Vader, who he made uh, a while ago. But it certainly is worth taking a look at these awesome figures, and if you have a chance, you should check out Miro's Flicker. Moving on to number four from Hellboy.Lego. That is the builder here. This is called Jackstown, and it's an absolutely awesome post-apocalyptic world. I don't know if this is based on any pre-existing IP, but it's a pretty raw and gritty uh, depiction of what the world might look like if all chaos broke loose. You can see a dirtied tank in the corner, a somewhat ruined building or bridge. There's the sign that says Jackstown, or what has been painted in red to read Jackstown. And it's just one of those builds where you take a close look and you can see a fun, interesting detail hidden in any corner of the build. Now we're moving into the final three. This is a build from Joxon. It's called Umi the Jelly and points across the board for just weird, interesting pieces being used in a really fun combination. I'm not totally sure what parts went on for the feet or hands or head. Someone please let me know where those came from. They feel like Bionicle or some form of it, but at the end of the day, this somewhat reminds me of the opera singer a little bit from the fifth element with those strands coming down the back and the long uh, blue head there at the top. Something tells me I'm not the only one that sees that, but it really is a creation in and of itself. Uh, quite different and weird. You can see that the arms and legs are made completely of joint pieces, so this really could be an extremely flexible character, and he's gone with just having an ever so slight angle built in uh, to all of the arms, so it's kind of like a flowing figure. Really, really fun build. And then this is the latest creation from Tony Flow 67 It's called Explorer, a Lego automaton that's the name of the video. I'm just going to show you uh, screen captures. You guys should check out the full Lego video because the motion here is amazing. I know JK Brickworks is another really, really talented uh, automaton creator or just general good Lego engineer who can make awesome motion. But Tony Flow 67 has a particular style in building and probably the best physical movements that I've seen out of any Lego creations. This one's pretty hilarious with the Explorer on the back of a giant ostrich, but I highly recommend you check out the full video here and the rest of his. They're all really, really fun. And now we're moving on to the last build of the week. It's just a small Hoth diorama, but I thought it looked great. It's from Fukusaku. Technical title is Assault on Hoth. And there was just a few techniques in this build that I really liked a lot. First of all, the slope in the snow is amazing. It's not the first time I've seen one by two tiles not fully pressed in uh, in order to get a little bit of texture there, but he's managed to create a fully sloping hill that goes all the way up to that defense turret, which by the way, that defense turret is one of the best looking versions of a defense turret I've ever seen in Lego. The stance for the ATST is really animated, and something tells me that that looks like the plus sized ATAT that you can get uh, the build for on Rebrickable. It might be slightly modified, but it looks pretty darn similar. Anyways, excellent little diorama. Also, in terms of photography, it's just wonderfully shot, and guess what? That is it for the top 10 mocks of the week. Everything flashing by the screen now is stuff that I haven't had time to talk about for the duration of this episode, but it is still indeed linked in the description below. Like always, there are incredible builders making incredible things each week. It's really, really hard to stay on top of it all. And if you guys do have the time, I do highly recommend you actually click the links, maybe even leave a comment or follow these guys on their social media. At the end of the day, there's a lot of creative people doing a lot of creative things, and I wouldn't mind seeing this subsection of expert LEGO designers getting more exposure and just more people seeing what they create and appreciating the awesome creations that come from people all throughout the world all the time constantly. I can't tell you how many times each week I find somebody new that has a massive history of amazing builds that I just never knew existed and I have been doing this episode for like three years now or at least two years. So yeah for sure this is basically one of my favorite things to do throughout the week and I hope to see more and more people jumping onto this creative avenue for the years to come. One day we'll get to a fan box creation episode and remember guys if you enjoy our content you can always like or subscribe thanks a lot for watching everyone and we'll see you next time at brick vault
Hey everybody, just jumping in, wanted to let you guys know that we've got a Lego web store, www.brickvault.toys, where we sell the PDF step-by-step -step instructions for some incredibly awesome, awesome Lego mocks. The revenue from the web store helps support us here at the channel, as well as the designers that help make these amazing Lego creations, and it's definitely worth checking out if you guys want to take a crack at building some of the more high quality, detail intensive Lego builds. That's www.brickvault.toys. And thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time at Brick Vault.